Hello everyone, today we're taking a look at the Baby Hawk 03. And because it uses the DJI 03 air unit and camera, you'll need to have a set of DJI goggles. Emacs is also launching their own Express LRS module. Uh, this is the nano module for our smaller controllers, but they also have a micro version, which has a screen, so you don't have to use a Lua script on your radio in order to change configurations. And yes, this LED does change colors. The Baby Hawk 03 edition does feature an all-in-one flight controller down there. It has an F411. It also comes with Betaflight 4.4.0, and it has a 25 amp ESC. And we've seen these motors before. They're 1404, 3700 KV. Props are the three and a half inch tri-bladed Emacs Avon props. Right in here is the Express Express receiver, which it does come with. There may be other options, but at this time, I don't have that information. So check the link in the description to check the product pages and see what other receiver options you have. It's secured right down here with a T-style antenna and a zip tie. As standard, Emacs has included a capacitor on here, which is a 35 volt 470 microfarad capacitor. It looks like we have a couple wires missing from that 03 wiring harness. That could mean that you're not able to use the DJI controller 2 with this. I am checking with Emacs on that, and if I have any additional information, I'll note it in the video description or in the first pinned comment down below. As always, Emacs is using the tape that I oftentimes refer to as Emacs tape to secure motor wires down. Always approve of that. And on this side, they secure the battery lead to the frame with a zip tie. I talk about this all the time, hooray! This gives you strain relief from pulling it off your ESC if you do have a battery ejection. And that battery is connected via an XT30, and this is a longer version of the XT30, and I find it's pretty snug. Or, you might say, difficult to get your batteries in and out of, mainly out. The O3 really only has its own uh, camera protection built in, those little flanges in the top and bottom. Emacs has included in their 3D print a little bottom protection, but normally we're flying forward, so that would only come to play when it comes along to hitting the ground. But it's still a good thing it's there. You can also see from this angle we have screws on either side, so adjustable camera angle for sure. And with that cut out on top, you can go probably almost 90 degrees. And Emacs has included a appropriately sized battery strap. That wasn't always the case with Emacs quads. And the rear battery mat is rubberized and it's pretty thick, but there is no texture on top. It weighs 156 and about a half grams. I flew it on these three different sizes of batteries and I did find the 650 for my flight style. Gave me about four minutes of flight and it kind of fit my sweet spot, but you can get around five minutes with an 850 and you get about four minutes and 40 seconds on the 720. With the 650 milliamp 4S battery, it weighs 226 and a half grams. With the 720, we get under 225 grams. And with the 850, we get 243, almost 244 grams. And in all three cases, under 250 grams with a few grams to spare. Carbon fiber is a full four millimeter thick. We got a top plate and then a mount plate for the O3. Top plate is eh, two millimeter thick. Can't get, really get my calipers down in there to get a bite on that. I'd have to guess that that's one and a half millimeters thick and motor post to motor post i'm getting about 154 and a half millimeters but that's as far as my calipers go in the box you get two extra props a baggie of assorted screws nuts and standoffs a propeller warning card a support and manuals card additional disclaimer and support and on the back side precautions and last but not least you get four individual stickers all right we're gonna pop into the rate profile because after my first flight i noticed uh it felt a little soft and yep sure enough We've got RC Expo on here. Uh, so just point one in the Expo, that does soften it up and gives it uh, something you may want to try. In my particular case, it made me feel a little bit sloppy. So as you see here, I'm walking through disabling the Expo by just taking all the values down to zero. And now as our aircraft processor has overheated, I'm going to save and we will take off immediately. Uh, there is some wind this day, 10 to 12 mile an hour on the winds. And if you didn't notice in that little quick preview flight that I gave you. Uh, do note that there seems to be a wobble at the very top of punch outs at the zero throttle. Uh, I don't know if that's the wind or the pid tune, 
Uh, it's hard to say. Uh, Emacs likes to do coordinated or launches that uh, allow all the reviewers to kind of have the same sort of launch targets uh, to release videos if they choose to. Uh, so you should have plenty of opportunities to take a look at the other footage that is available to see if it also contains that zero throttle wobble. That could be a DJI camera issue that I thought DJI had fixed. Uh, the, you know, like a lens or some internal component was a loose in the camera that caused uh, a wobble that I think was similar to that. Uh, I, unless this is it, I have yet to identify that myself. I would have thought that was just an early production issue for DJI, but maybe not. Uh, but it could be a PID tune issue. Might need to uh, pump up the PIDs in some way or increase the digital idle in uh, at the very least. And I thought flying this on a 650 milliamp 4S battery and getting four minutes of flight. That was pretty efficient, especially for something carrying the O3, a fully encased O3, not naked or anything like that, as well as it coming in under that 250 gram limit, which for some people is going to be important in the future date, and for other people, eh, maybe not so important. We'll see how this all plays out as time can fly by. But I thought it flew well, and you'll see a few things that when I uh, come in a little bit flat, uh, a few times some of our veteran pilots will note that uh, that we do get some prop wash so I do think there's uh, a little bit of a PID tune improvement we could make uh, but it's not the sort of thing that too many uh, newer pilots or unless you're, you're well versed in PID tuning that you'd probably be too fussed with I would say this is equivalent to my PID tunes which I oftentimes make the disclaimer that my PID tunes are only 60 or 70 percent of there because I do know that some people can really lock in a PID tune uh, but I also wouldn't be surprised if Emacs comes back uh, with PID tune improvement Pid tune improvements. Uh, you know, they have their own team uh, pilots, they have people that fly for them, and they can provide them additional feedback, as well as with a coordinated launch like this with all the review videos coming out at the same time. Uh, we all have the opportunity to give Emacs some feedback, as well as be able to ask them questions and have essentially, in most cases, with Emacs enough time. I know some people don't like that because it just clutters up your YouTube feed with nothing but the same product reviews to look at. Uh, I wish it were uh, more of a variety to it, but I also like the coordinated release because then there's not that rush to first. Um, in my case, you know, I, I, I'm, out, I'm pretty. In my case, I'm really only first if the company sent it to me as an individual reviewer, probably two weeks before they send it out, just because I, I don't work very fast. I fly these things a lot. I have a day job, uh, I have a family. And I have a life outside of FPV and work and family too. So uh, it takes me some additional time. And then you add in the fact that I do like to get a lot of flights on these things uh, so I can experience crashes or different sort of flight flaws. And I can bring them out in the video when I do make the video. Uh, so I showed you my most dramatic crash, which it handled just fine. Uh, there's a crash that I had later on with an 850 milliamp battery, but it was in the grass. All it did was bend one prop up, uh, and we'd really have no damage to report. Uh, even with some other crashes that happened throughout the course of this and other days, they were all pretty minor. That one where I hit the leaves, which has happened to time um, sometimes because that tree limb kind of it leans down on more humid days or as it gets more moisture. Um, and it decreases my gap and I'll catch that and then I smack down into the uh, garage and fell down to the cement so that's probably the best durability test I can give you without intentionally crashing it which has happened on this channel before but it's not something I like to do uh, as far as price point no, I don't know at this point in time I, for, uh, I forgot to ask that question early on and I don't think I'm going to have that information back uh, right away so I'm hopeful that this is a competitive price I'll have links down in the video description so that you can go to the product pages that uh, is available at the time of launch and you can see uh, the price point for yourself. Uh, you see, I flew a little bit long. I'd say about 10 seconds too long. Battery at 3.42 volts per cell. It is worth noting that the Express Alert receiver I received with my review unit did come with Express Alert version 2.4. Uh, I didn't have any problems flashing it. Um, the Emacs uh, 2400 or 2.4 gigahertz uh, receiver is already in the Express Alert configuration update application, so no big deal. I put it into Wi-Fi mode. I did notice the Wi-Fi was a little bit weaker than I'm used to. That could have been just mine, or maybe it's mounting, or how I had things around my desk. But anyways, it was a little bit weaker, but it still updated just fine. I didn't have to retry a bunch of times. So if you're running Express LRS version 2, you'll be all set to go to just bind it up to your Express LRS radio. Or if you're running version 3, you'll need to update it just like I did. And if you're getting the Aries uh, from Emacs, their new, uh, they have a nano and a micro version. The micro version has a screen. So you'll be able to use that without having to go into the Lewis script on your radio. Uh, if you're getting these, 
fresh, you're just get, kind of getting started in Express OS, probably best to just update them to the most recent version. So there aren't too many points to hit that I didn't hit in the quick specs. I try to front load as much information into my videos as I can. Uh, so let's see. Uh, we got a 3D print back here. It holds the antenna. I didn't have any problems with that. You'll see some scarring marks in here. Uh, that's from some of my crashes and where the antenna would scoot down and rub on the edges of the carbon. The carbon is not chamfered. It's, it's all right angles. Uh, we do have a 3D print here. That's a good thing because that protects our uh, battery lead from you know, rubbing around that carbon fiber and possibly getting a nick or something in it. And they did secure it down to the frame. So I approve of that as I've already stated. And then we've got the holster, which you can kind of see. Eh, maybe if I got enough light, not much of a studio down here. There's a little holster that's built into this mount uh, for our receiver. Uh, I already called it out. We got the two plates. Do note there's a washer between those two plates. So if you take this apart, that washer, you know, when things get loose, that's gonna be one of those things that falls and could get away from you. And then you're gonna be kind of crying in sadness as you go to remount things. So uh, do note that little washer down there. Also note that uh, not only does it come with Betaflight 4.4.0, uh, but here are the PIDs that I am flying with. I have a video on my rates. You're welcome to look at that. I'll link that down in the video description. Uh, it's pretty, I use pretty high rates. Uh, not for too many people. And as I said at the intro of the flight video, I don't use Expo. Expo makes me feel a little bit sloppy. Just something I'm not used to doing, but I have tried it from time to time, as I did with the first couple of flights with this guy. Because I didn't notice it had Expo when I was doing the setup. Uh, something else you may want to kind of take a look at here is that that O3, there is a, a gap in here. It's not sitting down onto uh, the all-in-one flight controller. And because we have a post here and two posts here, we should have pretty good support uh, if we come into a crash and we hit our battery and that battery compresses down. We got a two millimeter top plate as well as those standoffs. So I think the probability that all this compresses down and causes the VTX to hit the all-in-one is very, very small. Uh, I, that sounds like a pretty terrible crash in my opinion, but I have been known to be wrong. Just ask my wife and kids. Uh, Emacs has been including this little plastic shell down here. So if you land in uh, grass that's got some dew in it or it's been freshly watered or something, that gives you a fighting chance that not too much of that water gets up there. The very least uh, doesn't get up there enough to cause a short. It could happen but that gives us some protection, so a fighting chance. Uh, also, all of our screws around here are all hex-headed screws, so that's a good thing, uh, even in our camera mounts and across the top. All hex-headed screws, so you just need a 1.5 millimeter hex tool in order to be able to uh, undo all the screws. Uh, Emacs did note they switched their carbon fiber uh, supplier because they wanted to improve their carbon fiber and its durability. Uh, the reports they had and I can kind of confirm this, is that the previous iteration of the Baby Hawk was pretty durable, uh, but they wanted to improve it any even further uh, because they're mostly concerned, as stated in the material that they sent, they're worried about uh, people entering the FPV market and, you know, crashing a lot, which, which does happen. And if you look at my props, you can kind of tell they've been crashed a lot. Uh, you can see these are kind of scuffed up. And you may have even noticed in the flight audio, which is a, my flight audio I put in with a secondary camera, actually this camera here, and then I edit that in. You will not get that flight audio in the native recording. Speaking of the native recording, what I showed you is with uh, Express LRS or Rocksteady is not on, and that is DVR. That's how we see the beta flight information on the screen. You can get straight out of the VTX uh, video recording that does not have the beta flight information. It's unadulterated. It's just what the camera sees. No extra in information, and I'll put a sample of that right up there. That is our cleanest video that you can get. Uh, so if you like to do cinematic flying and you've got an O3, or you're going to be getting a Baby Hawk O3, you can get video both ways through the goggles or straight off the VTX, which you plug in here and you don't need to have an extension or anything like that. You can also slide in an SD card and use that for your storage. It has some onboard storage and then the SD card would be your secondary storage, which you can switch from the goggles. I was pretty happy with what I saw in the build and the little changes they made to make it O3 compatible. I think one of the most difficult things our manufacturers have is to provide any additional camera protection with the O3. It's got such a wide field of view that either you're going to get part of a, a canopy or carbon fiber plate or something in view if you try to get much camera protection. And as you can see, Emacs, you know, a company that has been around a while, so they're used to engineering around these things, even they're not able to really incorporate much camera protection uh, for the O3 camera without 
just kind of leaving it hanging out there out front, which is unfortunate. And maybe we'll see improvements from DGA's future products to where maybe it's still got that same field of view, but affords us some mounting that can get it back into some protection. But uh, that's one of the biggest drawbacks about O3. Is I'm sure there's other drawbacks, but one that I note quite a bit. Uh, again, I don't know the pricing on this. I suspect it's going to be fairly pricey with that O3 in there, uh, but I'll put links down in the video description to the Emacs website as well as any other website that might be carrying the Baby Hawk O3. If you're aware of a website that is carrying the Baby Hawk O3, uh, just kind of type. Don't don't send me the link to it because YouTube thinks all links are spam when when those are sent in through comments. So just say you know my favorite drone shop, you know, awesome drone shop, whatever. Don't put the .com and stuff. I'll look it up and I'll try to find the O3 on there and then I'll link it down in the video description. Uh, it doesn't have to be an affiliate link. They'll have to offer affiliate. That's fine. Uh, I just want to make it easy for people to find the products that they want to get where they want to get them. If you have any comments, questions, suggestions, or otherwise, please let me know in the comments section below. I appreciate your time. Thanks for watching. Tiny whoop, tiny whoop.